everyone, it's Pam Grimminger, and I wanted to do a screencast to show and explain my curation of resources for our Digital Information Fluency Final Project. So I used Pearl Trees for this um, curation, and I did it because I have used Pearl Trees in the past, and I thought it was a really nice way to organize things into folders, um, and I was able to separate my resources from the resources for my students. So first I'll show you um, the folder that I made called My Resources. So this is where I put a lot of my professional goodies in there. So for the OER lessons, um, I have those in my spelling and grammar conventions folder. So these are all folders um, that are relative to what I teach. And I did make one called odds and ends because I feel like I always find things that don't really fit into a category. So I put it in that folder. So I was looking for open educational resources that had to do with spelling conventions and grammar. There are a lot of standards, especially in writing, that relate to spelling conventions and grammar, yet it's not something that our, folk, that our curriculum focuses on real heavily. So I pulled some resources and some lessons from Khan Academy and CK12, even though I didn't feel like I found a lot of resources in those um, search engines, I did find things for spelling and grammar, which was a needed area. So I have some suffixes, lessons, spelling, contractions with apostrophes, and then Khan Academy has a lot of lessons with parts of speech. So I've curated those into this um, section. I also, for book clubs, through Amazon Inspire, was able to find some really great book club information. So I have one for Holes, one for Bud Not Buddy, and one for Hatchet that I found um, from Amazon Inspire. So I also have a folder called OER Sites. So if I click on there, it just takes me to the different OER sites that were helpful to me, and I'm able to search for lessons and resources that way. For my scholarly journal articles, under professional resources, I uh, put a lot of the bookmarks that I had from different places into here so I can find them. But under scholarly journal articles, I made folders for the different areas that the journal articles fell in. So the first one was ELA, and this is for literature circles for small groups. So this will be helpful as I plan my instruction for literature circles, and this one talks about online collaborative lit circles. So thinking of how I can do it um, in a way that's not necessarily traditional. Under technology, there is an article on you know, using universal design for learning for the for Google Classroom. So we use Google Classroom a lot. Um, it is our the LMS that we are provided with. So anything that I can find for Google Classroom is helpful. And then this is about grading in elementary English language arts. There's a lot of um, opinions and different sides to that. So we, as the district, have been talking about what does grading look like and what does our report card look like. So both of these articles um, will help me with the conversations that we'll continue to have about grading in the English language arts classroom. Um, I also have a folder here called Twitter. So I have a link just to my Twitter page, and then I did four different um, hashtag searches. So one was digital portfolios. I took that class over this summer, and I am hoping to use digital portfolios this upcoming year with writing. So I have a Twitter search for that. Um, just hashtag fourth grade because I'm a fourth grade teacher. Uh, flexible seating is another Twitter search I did. I started implementing flexible seating when I still taught life skills. And when I moved to fourth grade last year, I implemented flexible seating and I continue the process of doing that. Um, I'm not quite completely there yet, but it's an ongoing process. So I found some really great resources and some cheap dollar store tips from Twitter. So I included that. And then Genius Hour is something I want to work on this year. Um, every other Friday, giving the, the students time to work on an inquiry project that they do throughout the year. So it's a relatively new concept. Some, of, some people call it passion project or 20% time. So I have found some resources through Twitter searches. So I included that hashtag as well. So most of my other resources are on the student page, which is fourth grade ELA. You can see I have a link to the screencast I made explaining this section um, to my students. 
So for the digital tools and apps, I have most of those in my frequently used links. So Google Classroom, Seesaw Learning Journal, which is how I would like to do the digital portfolio, Padlet, Kahoot, Bibliognasium, Newzella, Flipgrid, and No Red Ink are some digital tools and apps that I have there. Um, instructional videos are located in a couple of different places. So the, some of them are in under the books section. So I have two books on how to find, or two videos on how to find a book that is just right. And then some of my single topic websites are in here. I found some websites that just have some top books for fourth graders or the most popular books for fourth graders. So I put those there in case the students are having um, some problems finding a book that they might be interested in. And then under research and searching sites, I have a video that I created on how to use Google Advanced Search. And then this is where a lot of my larger portals of information are located. Um, so this is just the websites to help with your search or just different websites where students can find information. And then I have a section for searching for images, so some copyright friendly image um, locations. And then under our historical figure, the historical figure project is um, connected to our wax museum and we do that at the end of the year. So I have my Google custom search engine here. So this is um, places where students can find information on their historical figure. But then I also have single um, topic websites that have some lists of um, historical figures that the students could get ideas from if they want to. It does not necessarily need to be someone from that list. Um, I do approve, at, pr approve all the historical figures before we um, before the students research. So that kind of explains my curation. I did get a little um, happy with everything, so there are a lot more resources here. But I'm really excited to have a place where I can have all these, these resources in one place and have it organized. And I was really thankful for the time to make this.